edition of Anglican Unscripted. This is episode 748. I'm Kevin Coulson, and I'm here with Susie Leaf, reporting from Lambeth. All right, thank you for sitting down to watch us. We're doing another show about Lambeth, Lambeth 22, where Susie Leaf uh, is sitting through the press conferences like George does and uh, talking to people through the hallways who wear purple shirts. And I thought we could get a little reflection here because today was quite a day as far as whether or not Anglicans have a pope. And I thought we could talk a little <laughs> bit about that. Uh, Justin Welby put out a letter stating that he finds Lambeth 110 to be an official document of uh, the Anglican Communion that is equal as the 39 articles maybe um, and something that is recognized in our history and wow I don't know if it matters that the Archbishop really you know considers Lambeth 110 real but he does and and so forth kind of puts this out as a papal statement if I recognize it it's real what, what's um, going just, on there? What's going on? I mean, it's been quite an extraordinary day. Um, the 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 Archbishop of Canterbury, who who always states that he isn't the Pope, has behaved in quite an extraordinary way today. So at lunchtime today, he put out a statement, a letter. He sent a letter to all the bishops um, two hours before the revised version of the human dignity call was going to be discussed, in which he set out that, as you say, that, the La that Lambeth 110 uh, existed. He affirmed the existence of Lam Lambeth 110. He talked about it as the historic teaching of the church. And he said that we have to admit that it is the position that the majority of people um, in the communion hold. He then went on to talk about the fact that uh, other provinces after very careful theological instruction uh, had changed the mind and that that was an equal uh, position to hold. So what he's done basically is to say that the whole issue of sexuality is adiaphora. He puts this in his letter. He then called the bishops I and mean, I don't know what expense it's you know how much money has been spent to bring all these bishops up conference and obviously this isn't the only issue that they're discussing but it's certainly from when I've been talking to bishops through the week it's been the one that most of them have been talking about and many of them have said they've come here to vote on this one issue and um, they went into the room expecting uh, maybe not to have an electronic vote maybe to have to vote with uh, their voice but actually what happened was the Archbishop of Canterbury uh, talked them through his letter just in case they hadn't received it, uh, led them in a time of silent prayer, gave them a full 30 minutes apparently to have robust discussions uh, on their tables uh, and then uh, the, the call ended. It was announced that there would be no vote and that the other aspects of the call would be discussed later in the week but paragraph 2.3 uh, had been um, kind of taken off the table. No opportunity for discussion. It is adiaphora in all places and all times as far as the Anglican Communion is concerned. He's made it clear, no discussion, no discipline. Is that going to be enough for the Global South? Because uh, at some time today, uh, English, uh, British time, uh, the Global South sent out a uh, email that they wanted people to read, and uh, after reading it, if they agreed with it, uh, sent a, a picture of their ID to a secret email address, uh, letting the organizers of the Global South know that uh, Lambeth 110 has been reaffirmed. Yeah. I mean, it was the timing of the letters was clear. That Justin Welby's letter was clearly arranged around the fact that the Global South had said that they would be putting something out at two o'clock. Um, their call—it's really worth going to if you go to the Global South um, Fellowship of Anglicans website, or if you go to Resource Twenty Two, uh, Lambeth Twenty Two website, you will find the text. It is extraordinary. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just read you the beginning of it to give you a flavour. Um, it says uh, that they've put out basically their own Lambeth call 
and they start by saying, the prophet Jeremiah declares that the leaders of his day have healed the wound of my people lightly. It's a warning for our day too. We stand at a crossroads and must ask for the ancient path where the good way is and walk in it. The only basis for our walking together is to submit ourselves again to the sovereign authority of Holy Scripture in loyalty to the Anglican tradition and its formularies. Uh, and it goes on. It, it, it has a proper affirmation of what uh, Christians have believed through the ages and it uh, calls for people to affirm not just the existence of uh, but the content Lambeth 110. Not because Lambeth resolutions are magic, not because they have an authority of their own, uh, but because of the biblical authority that is claimed within Lambeth 110. You see, and th that's the problem with this letter. It doesn't recognize that the Holy Spirit is doing something new. <laughs> okay. uh, Justin Welby, Archbishop of Canterbury, understands the Holy Spirit is doing something new. The Episcopal Church understands the, the Canada, Scotland, Wales, I can't name them all, have a completely different understanding of scripture, reason, uh, and tradition. And even after spurious theological debates have come to the conclusion that same-sex marriage and same-sex blessings um, are a healthy alternative in the Christian life. And I, I, I want to refute that, but I, I'm having difficulty when the, my own Archbishop of Canterbury, Pope, decides that he's going to declare that Lambeth 110 uh, is a great historical document and maybe not much more. Yeah, uh, absolutely. We've had language today of uh, those who have entrenched views versus those who have done great theological um, thinking. Uh, we've heard about those who've moved forward uh, in the idea that others have stayed um, in the backward position. Uh, it's, just, it's, it's just very depressing um, in, in many ways that um, yeah, the, the respect that we're being asked to show one another is certainly not being shown um, for those who hold to the biblical orthodox view. I heard a rumor that my friend Chris Sugden was muted during the press conference this morning. Tell me that's not true. Oh yes, uh, that was that was just quite a way to start the day. So we we were talking about reconciliation. We were talking about the vital importance of. Uh, hearing one another, listening to one another, and the truth coming out, however painful it was. And Chris uh, was on Zoom, he, he wasn't in the room. He asked a question that began um, that with, with the understanding that a third of the bishops are not here in Canterbury, there is clearly a, a job of reconciliation that needs to be done. And as Lambeth 110 is at the basis of the problem, and as he said Lambeth 110, he was told, no, we're not talking about human dignity now. That's the next section. Interestingly, today is the only uh, day where the bishops have had to deal with two calls, um, just to confuse things. It was told that he, he it wasn't about reconciliation. And he continued to speak and continued to say, but actually at the heart of reconciling over this matter we'll be dealing with Lambeth 110 and uh, what we ended up with was um, a, a muted Chris on the screen waving his hands in the air trying to get his point across um, well, well Chris you just be you Chris is my martyr uh, reporter you know took one for the team and this is a great time to explain, not just to the, the viewers here of Anglican Unscripted, uh, but maybe Lambeth people who are watching, the, the fabric of the, of the communion is torn. Okay, and Lambeth 2022 20, should be the conference where we try to repair that by bringing everybody to the table as equals and trying to, to stitch that together. But all I hear from what I can see is the Global South are Neanderthals, this is not me speaking. This is just the you know what what's being interpreted from uh, the conference, and that anybody who's already decided in their province to uh, engage in uh, same sex marriage and same sex blessing, they are more how should I say it, wit, uh, wit wise, more attuned to the spirit. 
more uh, more of the future of what, what's going to be benefit the Anglican Communion. Mm-hmm. And it's difficult to watch, Susie. It is difficult, and I think what's hard is what what they I think what others would say let's be fair about this I think what they would say is everybody has a voice they can all come to the table uh, they can all speak um, I think we spoke to four or five six different random uh, bishops from the global south today um, as we were as we were told that it was really important that we didn't speak for the bishops so mm. we were making sure that we were speaking to different bishops around the place and very much even bishops who are not part of the sort of core global south i spoke to one bishop from south africa who spoke who said that he didn't feel the process was allowing his voice to be heard um it, it it's he he thought he was coming here to to be to be listened to and he gets 15 minutes here and there on a table to talk about things which might get written down uh, and might be, might get read one day I think It'd people be, are feeling quite unhappy. It would be very ironic if uh, the only experience many of the Global South and uh, South African bishops uh, experience is white privilege at, yeah. at Lambeth. Um, yeah. did, do you see this going on? I think that's, I think that's right. I think we've, we've got various things going on. We've got um, you know, sort of mini Delphi method going on, this whole idea where you bring people together, you encourage them to ex- share their story, but then that has to be interpreted through a facilitator right. who writes down the notes. Uh, those notes will go forward to an unidentified group of people who will then consider what the whole group said. So we've got 650 bishops there, almost 100 tables. Every single one of them is in a group of seven. Um, Kind of so an, no one in, knows in, in, it's like in, other yeah it's it's like in daba with a, a mystery treat in the bag you know <laughs> just like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right and and constantly the voices you know i found it quite extraordinary that today for two years we've had groups of groups of people meeting together to put together the calls mm-hmm. and so a, a document was published with the call text in it the bishops received that five days before the conference began. They get, were given five days to consider the material that had been being worked on for two years. Uh, it was then changed. Um, they got a revised version. When they arrived. When they arrived, yes. When they arrived, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's right. As one yeah. of them said, you know, we were given a printed book and then we were told that the printed book was no longer relevant because it had been changed. Um, and then they are exp- then they are only given the opportunity to talk to six other people about it and their voice is is that is the extent of their voice um and we keep being told it that's because this part of the conference is only uh, the middle bit because there is this going to be this mystery third part of the conference when all the little notes that have been written will be taken and 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 processed um but no one really believes that that's going to come out with any kind of strong voice about anything now george george uh conger my uh wonderful reporter with anglin inc and anglin scripted has been looking at pictures uh being put on twitter and facebook and stuff like that and he's seen bishops that really shouldn't be there uh, retired bishops from America, uh, and I'm what we call shadow bishops. Are you seeing that as well? That people who are uh, retired bishops, or maybe you're just not familiar enough with the faces, uh, are there, or is this they won't tell you who they are? I, yeah, genuinely, I couldn't, I couldn't say that. But I think there's been some really interesting um, pieces of uh, work being done this conference mm-hmm. about the the relative size of the different dioceses. Oh, yeah. um, I think we've talked about it before, but you know, I was talking to someone the other day. Their diocese, a hundred thousand people in their diocese, a Bishop of Singapore. That's extraordinary, mm. me. And uh, so you've got a hundred thousand, one bishop representing a hundred thousand people turning up at church every Sunday, and then you've got this a bishop from um, you know 
got you're several. The, I think it's yeah, seven in the Episcopal Church who've yeah. got less less than a thousand people in the membership list of their of their diocese. More pe people will watch you in the first fifteen minutes that I publish this that exist in the diocese of Northern Michigan. Yeah, but, it's a. And it, you don't want to say it's a numbers game, but if you can afford to pay bishops, mm -hmm. if you've got the money to be able to keep bishops paid, um, then you can have a lot more people at the Lambeth Conference. Mm -hmm. um, and their voice then is magnified. And I spent this afternoon talking to a group of bishops from South Sudan whose desire is just to get the gospel out in a war-torn country um, where the economy is just um, disintegrating, particularly because of the Ukraine war, yeah. because a lot of the aid that was going into South Sudan is going has come out of South Sudan and gone towards uh, the European uh, crisis. And uh, they are just, well, the extraordinary thing is they're still joyful because they, they say we can still tell people the good news about Jesus. They have found Lambeth 2022 to be redeemable because they're sharing the gospel with other bishops who probably never heard it before right. yeah and, and i say that on it i say that in awe because i had a uh, now a good friend from kenya visit me in 1994 who was just a, a lay person in the church and we took him he didn't have any shoes at the good shoes at the time we took him to a shoe store and at the shoe store he witnessed to and brought the shoe salesperson who was fitting shoes with him to Christ. I was floored. First of all, yeah. I was embarrassed. That, I was embarrassed that this guy from Africa was talking to uh, an, a person here in America about Jesus. You know, this isn't going to go anywhere. Wrong. You know, it's just we we that's are. Right. And I think that's the wonderful thing, isn't it? I just think yeah. there is something so refreshing about being with people for mm -hmm. whom. Um, the reason they are in the role they're in is because they love the Lord and they'll take risks for Him. Absolutely. And it, it doesn't give them a palace. It doesn't give them something extraordinary. It, it just gives them the opportunity to to serve. Um, and so, yeah, for me, lunchtime today was a joy. Um, this afternoon has been, well, I suppose a, you just expect it in the end. You know, you hope. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, this morning at the press conference, uh, Bishop Tim Thornton was asked what will happen if the Global South managed to get a vote on Lambeth 110 put on the floor mm -hmm. of, of the discussion. And he just said, I don't know. I don't know what we would do. Well, they found a way for it not to happen. There is no vote, not even mm -hmm. a vote by voice. Um, and um, but the bishops, the, the Global South bishops, are still putting together uh, this call for bishops to um, sign up. So, if you're a bishop and you're Orthodox and you're listening to this, then please make sure that you get your badge photographed and sent through uh, to the Global South uh, Fellowship of and Africans. In fact, in the show notes of this episode, I'll have a link where you can uh, oh, yeah. to learn more. So, all right, we are looking forward to your report tomorrow. Uh, I know you're going through a lot of chaos, but understand, as the Global South does, this is redeemable, and uh, we, we hope to uh, uh, certainly um, be salt and light in that dark place we call Lambeth Conference 2022. I'm Kevin Coulson, and you've been watching Kevin Coulson and Susie Leaf talk about Lambeth. <laughs>